Hi everyone, welcome back. For those that are new, this video is a progress update on the compact bionic hand I'm working on. So far I have four fingers fitted with motors which drive pulleys to actuate each finger. Micro rotary potentiometers are also mounted to each motor shaft to allow for position control. I have also fitted the thumb with three motors, providing three degrees of freedom. The first motor in the thumb drives a pulley with a tendon connected to it to actuate the phalanges, much the same way as the previous fingers in the previous video. A U-type micro motor also allows for a pivoting motion at the base of the thumb, providing the second degree of freedom. And finally, the third motor is again a U-type, which drives a worm gear to rotate the whole thumb subassembly relative to the palm. The worm gear coupling to the spur gear decreases the output speed by a factor of 20. And unfortunately, the U-type motors I have on hand have a fairly high gearbox ratio, which means a slow rotation speed. So this opening and closing of the thumb is quite slow at the moment. But I've ordered more of these motors with a higher output speed, so this will be an easy fix in the future. Essentially at this stage, I'm evaluating the actuated motions of the device and finding small mechanical issues here and there to fix. I'm also experimenting with different grip patterns and seeing what's possible. The device can quite reliably grasp onto large objects. However, manipulating smaller objects is naturally more difficult. I even experimented with trying to operate a pair of scissors with the hand, and I'll talk about this more in a bit. The unit is able to touch each finger with the thumb, which provides provisions for more advanced functionality of such a hand fitted to an amputee. This is only really seen in cutting edge advanced designs, which aren't really suitable as prosthetic hands, either because they're very bulky or they're very expensive research devices. I've sped up this video to show the thumb tip moving to each fingertip. This was a big goal I wanted to achieve when I first started thinking about this project. So it's pretty cool to see it working now in the physical world, or at least as an early prototype. The dream is that this hand could be an affordable prosthetic hand which provides more dexterity than other commercially available devices. The compact nature would also hopefully allow people who have only lost their hand to utilise it. Many myoelectric prosthetic arms tend to house electronics and batteries in the forearm, which make them unsuitable for a person who has lost their hand but still has their forearm. As to be expected, the control of this device is pretty difficult. For this early testing phase, I have numerous momentary push buttons. I have two buttons for each motor. Each one actuates either the forwards or reverse direction. Actuating one motor at a time and using visual feedback to adjust positioning is painfully slow. And in reality, an amputee obviously wouldn't be able to operate so many buttons to control the device. The plan is to try use an EEG headset and train the user to activate various grip patterns with their intentions, or in other words, with their thoughts. A single EMG channel could then be attached to their upper arm muscles, which would activate this pre-selected grip pattern, and the motors would drive to their required positions. I'll discuss this more in future videos. If you like this project, please drop a like on the video and subscribe and turn on the bell notifications. It really helps the channel grow and will ensure you don't miss any upcoming videos. Some more immediate issues with the device are the numerous small errors with the mechanical design. In many cases, the clearance I designed in was too large. Clearance is essentially micro gaps designed between mechanical parts to ensure they fit together nicely. In my case, I was designing with standard FDM printing accuracy in mind. However, SLS printing, which is what I'm using now, is far more dimensionally accurate. So instead of leaving clearances of about plus or minus 0.25 millimeters, I should have made it more like plus or minus 0.1 millimeters. Some examples of this include the fingers, which are a bit wobbly in their base. This actually isn't necessarily all that bad, as a super rigid design is more likely to break under impact. 
It made me think of experimenting with printing the base locking parts, or, or what I call the knuckle parts, in a flexible material. The idea was that the flexibility would add some toughness to the fingers, meaning they could be knocked around a bit without breaking. Unfortunately, the parts I got printed were too soft and flexible for the application. I believe I went for a sure hardness of about 70 gerometers, but found something more like 90 gerometers would likely be better. And if you're wondering how the hell you 3D print flexible parts, well, these are actually done on advanced machines that use polyjet technology. To the best of my understanding, the print head has two nozzles, one which extrudes a soft material and one which extrudes a hard one. The combination of these two materials can be controlled to give specific hardness values. Similarly to my SLS printed parts, I'm paying to get these polyjet parts printed. You may have noticed that the fingertips are actually printed in a soft material too. This is to provide better grip and compliance when grasping objects. The geometry and attachment of these fingertips at the moment is definitely not perfect, but I have ideas to improve this in the future. I also did a similar thing for the palm cover, making it soft and flexible in order to hold onto objects better. Now back to testing. Unfortunately, as seen here, the fingers weren't quite strong enough to fully close these scissors. These scissors are a little bit stiff, but I was surprised the fingers couldn't close them because they felt kind of strong at first. It could very well be that the fingers aren't applying force in the correct direction to close the scissors, although it will be hard to address this because the fingers only have one degree of freedom. I also noticed the importance of having decent force from the fingers in the extension direction. At first I thought significant force was only necessary for flexion, or closing the fingers to hold objects. But in the case of using a pair of scissors, you need some flexion force to open them. I could make the elastic providing the extension force higher, but then that would increase the load the motors have to overcome, reducing the closing force. I'll have a good think about all of this and try address it at least somewhat in the future. I also tried and failed to operate a pair of tweezers. And speaking to my friend, he reminded me that when we're children, it takes a long time for us to learn how to use a pen and really to gain the dexterity in our hands. So I think at this stage, I'm not too disappointed with how things are looking and there's definitely much room for improvement. I also unfortunately found that some of the motors were damaged in my testing so far. Specifically, the index finger motor seems to be driving a lot slower than it was at first. This may be because I was stalling the motor when trying to close the scissors, which caused the motor to overheat and be damaged. Although there could be some other mechanical issues going on inside with the attachment to the pulley and tendon. So I'll investigate this further. In the future, I plan to have more sophisticated software implemented as to not drive the motors at stall for very long or even at all. And that leads into the next point of discussion, the electronics and software. At the moment, I'm using an Arduino Mega to send PWM signals to micro motor control boards from Pololo. Essentially, these boards contain H-bridges, which allow for speed control of motors in forwards and reverse directions. I'm reading two momentary push buttons for each motor, one to actuate each direction. And I'm also reading a micro rotary potentiometer for each motor. These potentiometers are fed into the analog to digital converter of the microcontroller and provide a value that varies with rotary position. They will allow for position control in the future, which will be essential for driving the motors to specific positions for a certain grip pattern. I have quite a few things to say about these potentiometers, but I think I'll leave that for a future video. As you can see, so far I'm doing the electronics prototyping on a couple of breadboards. I tried my best to keep things neat, but the nature of breadboards tends to lead to a big mess of cables. The next step, I think, is to make a custom PCB which will contain the electronics and mount to the back of the palm. The battery to power this will be housed in the wrist section, and while I'm at it, I'll add in the two motors for the wrist. The software running this at the moment isn't anything special. I've used some hash defines for different motor speeds, and I've made variables for the PWM signals and activation pins of each motor. After initializing the motor outputs and momentary push button inputs, I check which push buttons have been pressed and either drive the motor forwards, backwards, or command it to stop. I'll probably try implement the motors as objects in the future. There's still quite a bit to be done on the software side. 
And that's all I have for you at the moment. If you like this work and you want to consider supporting the channel, please visit the Patreon page in the video description below, or you could also make a one-time donation. Thanks again for watching and have a nice day.